Hi YouTube and welcome back to another video here at For Goodness Snakes. Today we have a really exciting video we're doing because we just got a brand new surrender. But before we crack into this video, we want to give a huge shout out to all of our patrons and the people supporting us online. We could not take in these surrenders without you guys. Because of you guys on Patreon and the people donating from our Amazon wish list and everybody who has been sending us stuff, we were able to take in three new surrenders this week. care of him properly the way that he needs because bearded dragons actually require quite a bit of attention in order to make these guys a sociable pet. Okay guys, so this is the enclosure that Ike was brought in. It is a 40 gallon glass aquarium, which is not recommended for bearded dragons, but since we are a nonprofit rehab, we really don't have the financial means to go out and just build amazing enclosures like what we have done for our boas here. So he's going to have to live in this 40 gallon enclosure for a little while while we start getting everything prepared for the longevity of this animal. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove everything that was in here to begin with, including this carpet. I know a lot of bearded dragon owners use a carpet, but you guys, I want you to think about honestly switching to a cleaner and better, safer substrate than carpet. If you think about it, this holds a lot of bacteria and can be kind of harmful for your animal. I also do not recommend sand for bearded dragons. Sand can be really dangerous and even deadly for these animals. Yes, it's what they have out in the wild, but in the wild, they're not contained to a small glass enclosure where they're breathing in all that dust, potentially leading to really bad respiratory infections. So Ike's owners did express that they did not handle him a whole lot um, or get him out just because his demeanor was a little bit threatening to them. Sometimes bearded dragons can whip their tail and do some things that might show a little bit of aggression. Um, however, this could just be irritation and it could just be the fact that they need to be more socialized, um, being that they need to be handled more. Also for males, this really is a rule of thumb with any reptile, well, most reptiles, but when they reach a pubescent stage around puberty, just like humans do, um, they can get a little bit agitated and irritable and their demeanor might change drastically during that time. And actually it could never go back to the way it was before. So keep that in mind when buying any kind of lizard because this is actually really typical in reptiles. Another thing is, <sighs> Ike has been used to a uh, water dish, which I don't really recommend for bearded dragons. They don't typically use water dishes as they do not require hardly any moisture at all. Um, so what we would do here is just to spritz a little bit of the enclosure, allowing the bearded dragon to drink the water droplets instead of having access to a full cool water dish. Okay guys, so the first thing that we are going to do is remove this carpet from the enclosure. And then we are gonna spray this entire thing out with chlorhexidine, making sure that all of the bacteria and urates and anything that might be left over in here are cleaned, disinfected, and sanitized. Okay guys, so we have sprayed this down with chlorhexidine. As you can see, even though there was a carpet that was in between 
the glass and the beardy, there's still a lot of dirt and residue that is on the glass from the bearded dragon. So we wanna make sure to clean all of that out. And there's some dried mealworms and just some things in here that you wanna make sure that your enclosures are very, very clean. So that way your animal is safe from any kind of bacterial infections or any kind of sickness that they might get or just a dirty enclosure in general. Um, you wanna make sure that you are cleaning these out at least twice a week, maybe if not even more than that, especially for a bearded dragon because their poop stinks. And to be honest, it's one of the most disgusting smells I've ever smelled. <laughs> Okay, so we got the carpet out of the enclosure. We sprayed everything down with chlorhexidine. If you are a reptile owner, you need to get chlorhexidine. It is both safe and effective for cleaning bacteria and viruses and germs and urates. It is literally one of the best products we have here in the reptile room. Actually, we're not in the reptile room, but it is one of the best products that we have in our reptile room. So I do highly, highly recommend chlorhexidine. Um, F10, things like that, because if you don't have that stuff and you have some kind of bacterial infection or respiratory infection break out in your reptile room, you're not going to have the proper things which are both safe and effective for your animals. Speaking of not being in the reptile room, because Ike is a new surrender, we are going to keep him upstairs with the rest of our surrenders for around 30 days before we introduce him to our reptile room. We do this to make sure that new animals we get in do not have parasites, URIs, or any other kind of infection that might spread to our other animals. So I highly, highly recommend if you get a new reptile and you already have existing reptiles, try to quarantine the new reptile for as long as you can to ensure the safety of your other pets. Another thing about bearded dragons is that they do need a lot of room. This 40 gallon is not even close to being adequate for what a bearded dragon, an adult sized bearded dragon is going to need. When you guys go to the pet store, you're gonna see those little kits of the beginner kit or the, what are they called? The starter kits. The starter kits, yeah. When you guys go to the store to get your bearded dragon, you're going to see something in something similar to this with a bunch of different things in it called a quote starter kit. I'll pip that in here so you guys can see what those look like. Now, while these are not bad starter kits for a baby bearded dragon, while your bearded dragon is small, it is adequate and sufficient, but as your bearded dragon grows, it's going to need much more room. So my rule of thumb is however long the lizard is, multiply that by three, and that is around the length that your bearded dragon can live comfortably. Bearded dragons are a desert animal, which means they're used to very high temperatures and very low humidity. Make sure in your enclosure, regardless of what it looks like, you have a temperature gauge and a humidity gauge so that you're able to see exactly what the environment your bearded dragon is living in uh, looks like. I think all lizards should have three different lights, UVB, UVA, a heat source, and a basking bulb. So while we're on the topic of lighting, let's talk about heat. So in the wild, most animals have a way to get away from heat. If something's too hot, they're going to need to be able to cool down because they do not regulate their temperature from the internally and they regulate their temperature externally. They need to have different temperatures throughout their enclosure so they are able to keep a safe, regular temperature inside their body. So for bearded dragons, they are going to need their cool side to be no less than 71 and around 77 at the height. On their warm side, they're going to need anywhere from 95 to 105 degrees. And that will allow them to be able to go. That is why also, you guys, you need a much bigger enclosure than a 40 gallon. This is not gonna give the proper uh, ambient temperature for this beardy, which is why um, Nathan and I will be building him a new enclosure very soon so that we can make sure that he has adequate heat and the adequate amount of cool for him to regulate his body temperature. So 
He does look like a toad. He looks like a little toad. Little toad, Ike. Look how cute he is. Meep. Oh, it's... So on the warm side, you want to make sure that you have something for your beardie to climb onto and to be able to bask. I do recommend something stone, something that heats up and holds that warmth for them so they are able to get up there and really collect all the warmth that they need. And the UVB UVAs. UVAs are very important for reptiles because it allows them to break down and synthesize D3 and calcium, which is essential in reptiles ability to maintain proper health okay guys so while you should have a humidity and a temperature gauge in your enclosure yes you also need to get yourself a thermo gun this is going to give you the direct temperature of the surface area so when you point the gun at their basking spot it's going to tell you exactly what the temperature is so you know it's not getting too hot and it's not too cool. These are a really good thing to have if you own a lot of reptiles or any reptile because it's going to give you the exact temperature of your animal and each thing in their enclosure. Get one of these. I cannot stress that enough. Get it, buy it, order it on Amazon. Something, you need this. Okay, now that we've got everything, well, almost everything discussed, let's talk about diet for these guys. He's not really very happy. So I set him down and he's probably getting a little bit cold. <laughs> Look at him, he's so cute. Okay, so diet, let's talk about diet. So these guys are not fully insectivores and they are not fully herbivores, they are omnivorous, which means that they're going to need both insects and vegetation. Things like mealworms, dubia roaches, um, crickets, things like collard greens, spinach, any kind of greenery. Um, fruit, yes, but in moderation. Fruit should only consist of about 5% like of their diet, if that, maybe even less. Making sure they just have a really big, what am I trying to think of? A diverse. really big, diverse, <laughs> diversity. Diversity. <laughs> yes, a diverse diet with bugs and plants that is what they need and you also want to make sure you are sprinkling both calcium dust and reptile vitamin dust on their food so you know that they are getting exactly what they need and enough of it why is he so fat it's like calcium okay so ike is basking his enclosure is all set up again this is very temporary um, while we figure out what to do for the long haul. Um, this enclosure is just way too small for an adult bearded dragon, but this is what we have for now. Um, this is why we're so appreciative of our patrons because you guys really help us to provide the best situation for living for our animals. And if you guys are interested in becoming patrons and helping us build Ike, the best enclosure possible for him to live out his days here at For Goodness Snakes, please visit the link that is below this video and feel free to join one of our pledges. We have pledges as low as a dollar a month and you guys, anything helps us. So thank you for watching this video. We appreciate you and don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video so we can grow our business and help as many reptiles as we possibly can. Really attached to him. They've had him since he was a baby. <laughs> Lizards all over the place. <laughs> He's in because he's crying all the time. He's in the room crying. Why we like reptiles? Because they do not cry <laughs> all the time. Okay. Yes. To clarify, we love our Staffy. He's just the biggest whiny baby I've ever met in my life, even over myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just because he disagrees.